Good morning, good people. Welcome to another edition of Double Innocence with your boy E Dub. Gem Dropper Show Stopper. So I'm not sure if you guys are prung to the uh, the new beef between LeBron James and Kendra Perkins. I have to smile because of the simple fact of the matter that it's about time. I, an individual like myself, as you guys can see, I'm a, I'm a, I'm pretty new on these YouTube streets. So I'm a, I'm an insect where it comes to having a voice on these streets. But when you could have people on bigger platforms share the same feelings about a specific individual it lets me know that I'm at least on the right page now we all know it's taken a little while for a lot of people to get here but the main reason why I'm here at the welcoming gate welcoming all these individuals with this type of opinion is because I myself was just like a lot of you LeBron Knights. I was brainwashed into thinking a lot more about an individual than he really was. My nephew, Q, was the first individual to introduce LeBron James to my life. He was the first person to let me know about this phenom coming out of high school. That people were predicted to be the new face of the league. That was before media, before anybody else. My nephew was the first person to let me know about this guy. So I started to do my own little personal research at that time. Saw some highlights of some high school games that he played in. And like everybody else, I said, wow, this guy's this guy's amazing. I'm trying to let you guys know where the taste of my mouth start to sour for LeBron James. Because remember, he came into the league, I was, nobody could have said anything negative to, about me, about, about, sorry, about LeBron James to me. Even though Michael Jordan was still my basketball king, LeBron James was the person I felt that was going to be the new face of the league. He was going to be the new man to take over from a Michael Jordan. I thought he was the best man equipped for that particular job. Now, even after he left Cleveland and went to Miami and did what he did in Miami, I was one of the ones that came out saying, Michael Jordan could have never done, have done what LeBron James did, which is take two different teams at that particular point in time right to the finals because at that time I wasn't paying attention to the ben to, 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 to you know the benefits of the whistle that LeBron James might have been getting you know that whole superstar star treatment I wasn't really paying too much attention to that I was just looking at the overall picture of the fact of the matter that he was able to get Cleveland to the finals didn't win and he was able to get Miami with the help of others yes but he was part of that team to get Miami to the finals so no matter how you slice that like I said that's something that I up to this date I still stand on that I don't believe that's, that, that that's anything Michael Jordan could have done he couldn't have left the Chicago Bulls and went to another team, in my personal opinion, and, and had the same type of success. But in that same breath, I also said LeBron James would not have been able to do what Michael Jordan did. Which was basically giving both of them the credit that they both, that they both rightfully deserve for what they did in the league. 
Yes? Where might taste start to sour for Michael Jordan? I'm sorry for LeBron James. Where might taste start to sour for him? Was when the media had the audacity to start comparing him to Michael Jordan. But even that, they took it one step further and wanted to start planting that thought in people's head that LeBron James was better than Michael Jordan. And no word of a lie, it's right around that particular point in time that my whole attitude started to turn against LeBron James. That started to make me focus a lot of what the naysayers of LeBron James were saying I start to focus on. I start to focus on the fact of the matter that every year a team has to be revamped. To suit LeBron James Every year Or if it's not every year It's every other year A head coach has to be fired To suit LeBron James And the more I start to pay attention To these stuff Is the more that I start to resonate And say wow You know Honestly speaking What, pe what the isolated few Had been saying about LeBron James has some accuracy to it. Where you start to ask yourself questions. How could a coach bring you to the finals one year and get fired the very next? Mind you, we don't want to get caught up and make it seem like it's the only LeBron James teams that this happened to. Because when this happened to Dwayne Casey in Toronto, I asked myself that question too. How is it possible you win coach of the year and get fired the next year? With Nick Nurse. I was an individual that thought that that job in Toronto was going to be Nick Nurse's job until he decided to either retire or give it up. For the simple fact of the matter that <laughs> you did something that nobody ever thought would have been able to have been done in Canada. You brought an NBA championship to the Toronto Raptors. So, in my mind, I just thought that that was your job forever. I know it's a, it's a stupid way to think, but... I'm just picking sense from nonsense. That's all. There's a lot of people out here that believe that it will never, ever happen again in Toronto. And you know what? There's a good possibility those people might be very, might be right. The Toronto Raptors may never, ever win another championship. But the mere fact of the matter is, we won one. How many organizations have been in the NBA for God knows how long that can't say that? That's something that could never be taken away. Why? Because that's part of history. It's in the history books. And Nick Nurse was the head coach of that particular team. But... We saw what happened with him. The, we saw what happened with him a year or two after that. No, well, it wasn't a year or two. It was a couple of years afterwards. But I'm just saying, I just never thought it would have ever happened. I thought for sure that, especially a team like the Toronto Raptors, they would have be, they would have backed the coach a lot faster than they backed the players. But whatever happened, happened. He ended up losing his job. He's in Philadelphia now, and Toronto Raptors are on a re rebuild. So, no, it's not just a LeBron James-driven team that these things happen to, is, what, is my point I'm trying to get to. But, when you happen to be the so-called face of the league and these things are surrounding you on a regular basis, and then you yourself want to add to it your antiques of jumping around like a spoiled little girl because you don't get a call from the referee, or jumping around like a teenage girl that just had her prom dress torn, because the simple fact of the matter that your coach refused to call a timeout to review a foul that you feel that the referees had missed. Or when you want to go, when you want to act all dramatic like, like, like a scene from The Godfather. Because the referees miss a call 
that didn't have you guys lose the game. It just made you guys have to go to overtime against the Boston Celtics. When you add all of those things on to what the stuff that you've already been accused of, that's the reason why you're just not my, my you're, ju you're just not it for me where basketball is concerned. And I need you people to understand anything I'm talking about, especially on a negative aspect about any of these individuals, I'm talking about what they bring to the table as far as the sports that they play. I've never sat down and had a conversation with any one of these particular individuals. So I'm not talking on their character as a person, an everyday person. I'm talking about what they bring to the table in terms of their sports. And I'm even going to back that up with another statement. Floyd Mayweather is my, I would have to say, probably one of my favorite boxers. But yet still, as an individual, Floyd Mayweather wouldn't be one, would, would, is not somebody that I would want to be around for the simple fact of the matter that people that are a little bit too boasty and talk about their money on a regular basis is not my cup of tea. Because, and he may, he, he may not be that type of individual, but I'm just saying that, you know, money Mayweather, walking around with a bag of money, all this type of stuff, da 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 that's not my kind of individual. I don't like boasty people. But, that being said, I've heard a lot of good things about Floyd Mayweather. I hear he does a lot of good things for people that the media doesn't cover. And maybe if I did know a little bit more about that side of him, then my opinion of Floyd Mayweather, the human being, would be a little bit different. But I'm just basing it upon what they, what, what, again, what the media has focused on. And those things don't really appeal to me. But, but in the ring, you give me Floyd Mayweather every day of the week and twice on Sundays. That's my guy. So I don't separate the two. It's not for me to really like a LeBron James on a personal level. That's for his wife and his children to do. That's not for me to do, to, to, to like the character of the man of what he does outside of basketball. The reason why I know anything about LeBron James is because of basketball. So any opinion I form on LeBron James is always going to be based on basketball. What he does and does, does not do for this game. That's it. I don't have the energy to get emotionally invested in anything else where that's concerned. He is who he is. And my opinion is my opinion, period. We're all allowed to have them. And like I said before, I welcome any individual, any of the LeBron Knights that obviously disagree with anything that I say. And I'm more than welcome to an open debate, a respectful debate. More than welcome to it. I'm not saying that I'm going to try and change your mind in any, any kind of way. And I'm not saying that you're going to change my mind in any kind of way. But there is a possibility that you might show, you might be able to mention something that might sway my, my train of thought. Because like I tell people, don't get the age distorted. I'm not too old to learn. This is one old dog that's not afraid to learn new tricks. Kendra Perkins, keep doing what you're doing, man. It looks like you've finally seen the light. And you're tired of just going along to get along. You're starting to voice your opinion. And it's unfortunate that you're in a job where part of what you have to do is voice your opinion. And just like you said, there's individuals out there that are way too sensitive. That, that, that feel that everything that's said about them always has to be on a positive note. We need more of people like Kendrick Perkins to start bringing people like LeBron James back down to reality. I want you guys to share. 
I want you guys to like and I want you guys to subscribe. Help this channel grow. And if you guys enjoy the content that you guys hear here, hit the notification button so you guys will know when I'm putting something out. With all of that being said, I want you guys to have yourself a wonderful Tuesday. Double Innocence with your boy E-Dub is...